Hey, 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 tough and the out of this world story from Street Travel. There are ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back in Street Travel. I am your host, Manir. Backstory My fiance and I have been together for about four years. She has two kids, 12 female and 15 female, with shared custody. It's an odd arrangement. She has them from January to June. In early September, she moved into our house. My daughter Charlie is 10. For the record, up until recently she has been an amazing mother figure to Charlie. Our first issue was back in November, as we discussed bedroom arrangements. She felt her eldest should have a room of her own while living here six months out of the year. That would cause Charlie to bunk with the youngest. I however, did not allow it because that would encroach on Charlie and likely cause her to feel alienated in her own home. Now to the issue at hand. Last weekend I was called in and worked a 12-hour shift. When I arrived home, Charlie was upset because my fiancé, and her two kids went out to eat and left Charlie home. She said that when they came back, she was just handed a bag of takeout and the food was stone cold. I asked my fiancé to elaborate, to which she confirmed taking only her girls out to an early dinner. She then took them to play mini golf, hence why the food was cold. It sat in the car while they played. She kept deflecting to the food, saying she didn't expect Charlie to eat it cold, she could have warmed it up herself. I kept insisting it was extremely rude to exclude Charlie from the outing. She came back, but I brought her home some food. She then asked, why is it okay for you to go out with just Charlie? That's totally different. In the last 30 days that her kids have been here, Charlie and I have only gone grocery shopping or on one occasion I took her cat to the vet. That can't be compared to what she did. We didn't come to any sort of agreement. Then on Friday, she was taking her girls to the dentist. On the way out, she made the snarky comment, I hope this doesn't offend Charlie too. It pissed me off that she said that and I called her feral. We both later apologized, but she then started the argument back up. She said it was so rude of me to argue about her taking her kids out. She further said, I don't see my kids for six months. Excuse the hell out of me for wanting to spend time alone with them. I understood her point, but I felt like we could periodically plan separate outings on the same day so no one feels excluded. She kinda threw the bedroom ordeal in my face and said, my kids might feel alienated from their own mother if they can't enjoy time alone with me. She made the pointless remark that her kids have no problem with her doing things with Charlie while they're living with their father. She further argued that there will be many times when Charlie will be excluded because of the age gap between her and the eldest. I told her if she expects things to work out, she would need to treat Charlie as one of her daughters. She said I was entirely missing her point because I don't know what it's like having shared custody. Me scolding her for spending time with them, as she said, was a BTCH a move. Now, I think I might be the a hole for expecting her to include my child in everything. I understand where she's coming from, but I feel like in this particular incident, she was wrong. So, am I in a hole? For the opinion. Well, OP, in my opinion, no, of course not. Your kid comes first, and what she did was in a hole move, and her whole argument just makes me think she's denser than mercury yogurt. Nobody's denying that she can't have alone time with her kids to bond, of course that's encouraged. And just like you say OP, the best solution would be for you guys to plan out these outings at the same time. So your fiancé goes out with her kids and at the same time you go out with Charlie and you both have bonding experience with your children. What your fiancé did was neglectful and irresponsible. And not only that, but she also refuses to take responsibility for what she did, turns herself into the victim and then makes some idonautic comments about, oh I hope this doesn't offend Charlie. Really, this whole thing would have been a deal breaker for me. If I was in your shoes OP, my response would have probably been something like, we are done, we are over, you need to get your crap, get your kids and get out of my house. I don't care if you go to a friend's house or a family member's house, you just need to get out of my house. And I know that may sound harsh, but for me, my kids will always come first. It is that simple. Now for the comments. Jasper Jamboree says, OP, your fiancé gave your daughter a bag of food that was sitting in the car as they played mini golf for presumably several hours. During that time, food can accumulate bacteria when left out between 40 to 140 Fahrenheit degrees in a little as two hours. Not only did this woman neglect your daughter to show favor to her own kids, but your daughter could have become ill from eating leftovers that were sitting in your fiancé's car. The fact that your fiancé is petty and vindictive and compares going to the store or taking a cat to the vet as the same as going out to restaurants and playing mini golf, then uses it against you. This is a manipulation tactic. Please take a long thought about whether this woman should be living with you. She may seem like she was a good motherly figure when she's around you, but now you see how she acts towards your daughter when you're not around. Not the a hole. And OP responds, Honestly, I didn't even think about the food poisoning potential. I was more focused on the big picture of excluding her. 
My fiancé was like, well, I placed her order to go after we ate. Like that changed anything, since she knew it would be sitting in a car for who knows how long. Nobody plays mini golf for a couple of minutes anyways. JSC Team Av says, not the a whole. As far as the bedroom thing, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. While traditionally the oldest gets their own room, this isn't a traditional situation. But that's really a side issue here. Leaving a 10-year-old alone while she goes for dinner and mini golf is completely unacceptable. That's evil stepmother territory. Yes, she wants and deserves time alone with her two bio kids, but that needs to be coordinated in advance. You don't just leave the youngest one at home alone. You make sure she has her own thing to do, preferably with her parents. While I realize this isn't a constant thing, I wonder if this is a good environment for your daughter. Is she going to be cut out and made to feel like this for six months of a year, then when her stepsisters are gone, be back to normal person status? That's not acceptable. Please, don't make her live like that. If you think this kind of situation may happen again, you might need to take drastic measures. And OP responds, I get that about the bedroom point, but even though we've been together for four years and our kids mingle together, they've never lived together until now. I think the first go around, the two siblings should share a room. Maybe by next year, Charlie would feel comfortable bunking with her youngest. I think it might be too much, too soon for Charlie. Like hey, they're moving in now and you're getting bumped out of your room you've had since you were born. That wouldn't be okay. Lian says, it doesn't matter how she was before, this is her now. She's fine excluding your daughter, knowing she'll be alone in the house with no one to contact. Are you sure you want to marry this woman? I guess this might be her little revenge for the room thing. That would be even worse as she would be punishing your kid when things are not her way. What are you waiting for? That once you're married she treats her even worse. Not the a whole. But really, why aren't you having second thoughts about moving into the wedding? And OP responds, well, cause I know this isn't a platform for that. Of course I'm having second thoughts. I wasn't really when the bedroom incident happened, I was taken aback by it. If the roles were reversed, I would never expect Charlie to have her own room if it was their house. But is this happening now? No, I'm not about to tie the knot with this woman anytime soon. Luckily, we don't have a date set. As far as I'm concerned, we're nowhere near that. Additional information from OP's comments. No one took care of Charlie all day, which technically isn't illegal in our state. We don't have a law on it. In the past, when I got called in on a weekend, she'd go to her grandma's house, ex-mother-in-law. Since she turned 10, I think she's mature enough to be left home alone. But I've never left her alone for more than an hour. I've specially never left her alone in the dark. Most times I left her alone just a quick run to a hardwood store. Fortunately, she's never had to be a daycare kid. My ex-mother-in-law has helped me raise her as she lives nearby. Charlie's mom left the picture when she was three. She doesn't ever see her, so having a mother figure aside from her grandma really helped Charlie to fill a void. And yes, this has only been an issue since she moved in. I should have elaborated more on how the dynamic changed. I get a lot of comments here saying, toss her to the curb. That's why I said to her, if you expect this to work out, I can't just throw her and her kids out. For starters, there's a housing shortage here and a long wait list. They'd have to go live in a hotel. She would possibly have her kids fully taken away at that point. I'm not a heartless prick. I can't in good faith just throw them out and be okay with that. Plus, per state laws anyways, she would have 30 days to vacate if it comes down to that. Now, before we lived together, she would take her kids to amusement parks, water parks, and bowling alleys. You know, all that type of stuff. Sometimes both Charlie and I would join, and sometimes we'd later hear about the things they did together. That was fine. No one was excluded because the dynamic was different. Two different households. And during the six months she didn't have the kids, we'd see each other more. We'd take Charlie together to go do fun things. Sometimes we'd have date nights while Charlie was spending time with her grandmother. Everything was fine. But my whole point in this issue is that I don't work every weekend. Until June, there are going to be many weekends where she can go off with her kids and do whatever she wants. Why pick the weekend I'm working to do it? No one even told Charlie anything except we'll bring dinner home. She didn't know about them playing mini-golf until I wanted to know what exactly the reason was for her being left home. It's like she knew exactly what she was doing and excluding Charlie because she was trying to hide it. Now, Charlie can always call me while I am at work, but she knows only to call if there's a real emergency, so she wasn't sure what to do. Had I known she was alone by herself, I would have periodically called to check on her, but I didn't even know. Finally, about the bedroom incident. We've all known each other for four years, but my child hasn't lived with her children up until recently. It's just weird to me that she expected her youngest and my kid to share a room when they've never lived together. They get along great, but that doesn't mean sharing a room would work out, especially since this is the first go-around. Alright, well, the community deemed OP not the a whole, 
And apparently OP is kinda done with this thing. But he's also a much better person than I am cause I would've kicked her out to the curb on day zero. Update. As of tonight, she's moving out. She's going to move in with her mother. I didn't think that would be an option. But I'm glad it worked out for her kid's sake. As far as our relationship goes, I can't forgive, but I can't forget. She's so DMN stubborn, she still doesn't see what she did wrong. She only sees herself as the victim in this. I'm honestly over it. I can't have someone mistreating my kid behind my back. Charlie has mixed emotions, which have made me feel even worse. She's been upset with my ex for what she did to her, but yet she's sad she's leaving. She thinks that when the other girls go back to their dads, the relationship would revert back to what it was. I told her that's like a conditional relationship. It's not healthy to be loved and treated well only six months out of the year. She should have treated my child the same, regardless if her kids are here or not. Tomorrow, the evil stepmother is officially moving out as soon as the truck arrives. Charlie will be going to her grandmother's during the move just to prevent any idle words from being spewed against her. Her grandmother has a fun day planned for her, which she's looking forward to. I'm looking forward to having this lady out of my house. She's DMN well taken over, and I've far too long kept my mouth shut. Story 2 In high school, I had two best friends. Mark would be 32, and May, 32 female. I, a 30 male, got kicked out of the house when I turned 16. Mark's family took me in and became like my adopted parents. Mark and May started dating when they were juniors in high school. After they graduated, Mark joined the military. During his first leave, May became pregnant. Shortly after his return to service, Mark passed away. We were devastated. She, at the time, was staying with Mark's parents and I was still living there. I took her to all of her appointments, helped her through her pregnancy. They put Mark's name on the birth certificate. By this time, I had graduated early and was looking to go to a local college. I became busy with school, but helped any time I could. Three years later, I graduated and got a good job in my own place. May moved in with me with her now three-year-old daughter, Alice. Alice started calling me Dada. We tried to persuade her not to do that, but we failed. After a year of us living together, I started having real feelings for May. I talked to Mark's parents, and they gave me the green light. Nothing happened between us up to this point. Two years later, we married. One year after that, she gave birth to our daughter, Jenny. Yesterday was Alice's 12th birthday. It was just me, May, Alice, Jenny and Mark's parents. We have told her about Mark throughout the years and she knows that he is really her dad. When Alice finished opening her presents, she pulled the last one out and handed it to me. I opened it, and it was adoption papers. At some point, Alice told me that she wanted to be officially my daughter. I explained that she is my daughter, and I love her with all my heart. I tried to explain that Mark is her birth father, and that she is both his and my daughter. With that, I gently explained that I don't think it was a good idea, and I would have to think about it. She got upset and ran to her room. Mark's parents ended up leaving. May and I got into a fight. I said I don't want to erase Mark from our history. After some back and forth, she called me in a hole and walked to Alice's room. She wouldn't let me in to talk and locked me out of the room. This morning, she would not talk to me and Alice was still crying. I don't know what to do. Please help. Also, I know it will be said, divorce is not an option. I plan on going over to Mark's parents later tonight. Am I in a hole? For the opinion. Yes, OP, you are absolutely the a hole in this situation. You broke Alice's heart. I get that you're quote unquote trying to do right by Mark, but what about Alice? Also, you're a ding dong. You wouldn't be erasing Mark from your history. He is right in front of you. 50% of Alice is Mark. Changing Mark's name in a document for yours is not going to make him go away. You guys remember him. You guys keep talking about him. You guys have pictures of him. You constantly tell Alice about him. I'm sure she knows and understands that Mark is her bio dad. But you are her dad. And you just said you didn't want to be. And I know those weren't your exact words, but I promise you, that is what she heard. So yeah, you are the a-hole. You need to fix this. And the only way I can see for you to do that is to properly apologize to Alice. Now for the comments. An outrageous cloud says, you're the a-hole. You got so caught up in honoring someone who is gone that you forgot to honor the person right in front of you. Danny6514 says, you're the a-hole. You didn't want to erase Mark, but you effectively erased yourself as Alice's dad, the only dad she has ever known. And for God's sake, if adopting her is called erasing, you shouldn't have married May. That's even worse. Mother Tradition 774 says, You're the a-hole. You fell in love with the mother of your best friend's child, married her, and have been raising their child as your own for the past nine years. Yet, somehow you think that officially adopting this child is taking it a step too far. That doesn't make sense. Alice wants to feel like she's just as much your child as her younger sibling. Why do you want to deny her that? Do you think Mark would be proud of you breaking his little girl's heart? 
Well, the community agrees. OP is the a whole. So how about we move on to the update to see how the story ends. Thanks for the support. To clear up parts of the story, I should have handled the situation differently. I never said no to her. When Mark went on leave for the first time, he was home for two weeks before he got shipped out. In those two weeks, Alice was conceived. Mark is 100% Alice's bio dad. Disregarding Alice's feelings was the last thing I wanted to do. May, Alice, and Jenny are my world. I don't treat my daughters any differently. My feelings for May changed when I saw the way she would interact with Alice after they moved in. It filled my heart with more emotion and love than I had not felt ever before that point. The party was just a close family, which was only us four and Mark's or my parents, since it was a weeknight. They left so we could work things out. Mark is the only reason I made it past my teen years. I was in a deep and dark spiral. He saved me, so when people say he is dead, get over it, I can't. He never gave up on me and I refused to give him up. I went to Mark's parents and had a nice talk with them. They said Mark would be happy and proud of who I am and how well I've taken care of the people he loved. They don't feel like I'm replacing their son in any way, but I am a son to them. I called my wife and she agreed to talk. I admitted how I felt we should have had this talk before the party, and this could have been avoided. At that, she did apologize. I then explained more about why I said what I did, personal feelings and emotions. She said that she thought I would be happy, and sign. I explained my point of view and she understood my concerns and hesitation. We were finishing the conversation when Jenny ran out of her room and asked if we were okay. I said yes and that I love her very much. I then went to talk to Alice alone. I went to her room and my heart broke again. She was still crying on her bed. I knocked and asked if we could talk. She squeaked out a yes. I sat on the edge of her bed while she had her back to me. I told her that I love her and I will always be her dad. I apologized saying that I never meant to hurt her. Sometimes adults make mistakes and are not clear with their words or emotions. I made a mistake and hope one day I can make it up to her. I explained Mark was a very important person in my life, and I am grateful that he was able to help bring a beautiful and special daughter into my life. I will always love her and I have the best daughters in the world. Not the full conversation. She turned around and hugged me really tight. It was one of the best hugs of my life. I told her that it would be my honor to adopt her if she still wants that. Between sobs, she said she did. We stayed like that until she fell asleep. After that, May and I had a very overdue heart-to-heart -heart and deep talk. It is not all sunshines and rainbows. We still have a lot of healing to do. I have not signed yet, I will. We, as a family, are looking through all of the legal options and we are on the books for therapy. And that's it for today's video.